Let me make sure I pull my notes up on this one. No Fafita, man, has impressed the hell out of me. And y'all know my boy was Jaden Delora coming into this season. I said that he was going to be underrated. This dude is a freshman. And he's putting up numbers, bro. 16 touchdowns, four interceptions. He's literally only played in one, two, three, four, five, six games so far. Let me tell you what he did against Washington to put them on upset alert. 27 for 39, 232 yards and three touchdowns, 69.2 completion percentage. That was like his very first official start of the season. Why does he look so angry? I don't know, bro. He's playing angry, too. Then they go in Washington State, smack them up 44 to 6. Then they go and upset our boy, DJ Uyunglele, no. 27 to 24. He threw three touchdowns in that game, too. Then went in, threw 300 on top of UCLA, three touchdowns. And then just pretty much sealed the deal on Colorado's season. Thank you very much. 214 yards and two and uh, two touchdowns. The dude has not thrown over two interceptions in one game and only has four interceptions up to this point. What other freshman in the country is doing what Noah Fafita is doing right now? Yeah, They are on a four-game winning streak. Mm-hmm. The only two teams that they lost against was USC in overtime and Washington in a close game. Oh, yeah, three overtime. It was a two-point game for USC, and then Washington was a one-score game. 73.7 completion percentage. As a freshman, dog, flying under the radar. Mm -hmm. Sora, what you think about my man Fafita, man? It shocked the hell out of me this year. I mean, yeah, no, he's he's definitely good. Again, kind of looking at it, his first game was against Washington, who at the time was number five in the country. 69% uh, completion rate, uh, three touchdowns, one interception. Took a loss in a close game there, then took USC and that high powered offense to uh, triple overtime. And for those that don't know, in triple overtime, you have to go for the two point conversion. No. And they mm -hmm. lost because they failed that two point conversion. Um, but he threw five touchdowns, one interception. And again, like Dante said, he hasn't thrown multiple, he hasn't had multiple turnovers in one game. Um, he has a 79.79.5 QBR, 15th in the country. Um, and again, he's only started in six games. It's uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's it's really wild. As as fishing is uh attending to his, his his doggy. And honestly, what's weird too is like Colorado was statistically his worst game, and even then he still had a really good game. He hasn't had a bad game. The reason why Arizona lost lost games so far is not because of him not trying. Correct. And I want I, I said this in our group chat. Shout out to Jed Fish, man. This dude has been a coach for a long time. Since 1998. Then went to Florida. Then went to the Texans. Then went to the Baltimore Raiders. The Broncos. Minnesota Gophers. Seattle Seahawks. Miami Hurricanes. It was the Jaguars OC from 2013 to 2014. I still remember you, bro. Michigan. UCLA. The Rams for two years. The Patriots. And now he's got his first head coaching job since 1998. If you talk about a dude, I, I just want to put it like this. If you talk about a guy that deserves to be a head coach is Jed Fish. And I know his first couple of seasons were not that great, but We've all said before, when and you start seeing the turn of the time. tide and let him go in there and get and, and, and do his work, bro, it's it's all good. First first of all, you, you know he was a, a Florida Gator, right? That's his alma mater. Oh, no, I know. Fishing and I have talked about this before. That's why I quietly said he has a chance to return. I'm sure we'll get into that, unfortunately. <laughs> his head coaching record is 14-22, and 0-1 <laughs> in bowl games. But I can, I can tell you something, man. Well deserved. Only mm -hmm. forty seven years old. He's still young, and he's a quarterback guru for sure. I mean, he's oh, a quarterback. He's got a chance. He, Don't worry. <laughs> he's a quarterback coach for a long time, bro, and mm -hmm. got to see some really good players play. So I think he knows what it's like. I don't think the decision to turn the ball over to Fafita was was it was not a hard task for him. He knew exactly what he wanted. 
DJ Lagway. <laughs> mm -hmm. One DJ Lagway, maybe Graham Mertz. <laughs> so shout out to Jed Fish for a lot of his success and and finding talent early. And I told y'all that they was gonna have a better season this year. I I said it. I said it live on the show. Well, I think that was one of our uh, red shirt transfers. Where they gonna be better than the six win team? I think it was between them and Miami. I believe we said. Uh, I believe so. Yes. I can't remember, but I know it was it was one of them teams, and yeah, they and they're I mean, the real deal. They can I think they could still find themselves in the in the Pac-12 championship if so a couple of things work out in their favor. Uh, I believe so. It's pac 12s open for a good chunk of teams, especially with the tiebreaker in. Mm -hmm. The the so, tiebreaker in no divisions. It's one two seed tiebreakers different. So there's a good chance for a couple of these teams. Not Colorado, but a good chance for a couple of these teams. Mm -hmm. and, and not to mention what he's doing in, in recruiting and everything. I mean, this is Arizona. This this is not a school with big resources. Like, and what he's doing there is really impressive. He's he's to me, he's like a Mike Elko, a Lance Leopold. I mean, programs that just are have not been Which good. Mike Elko, and, for those that didn't know, is Duke's head coach. Looking at you, Hayden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, he's one of those guys. I mean, winning at a program that just doesn't usually win at all. I mean, here, here's exactly what I sent to Fish. Because, again, we talked about it. We, we uh, Trust me. We know about Jed Fish. We we knew that he was a Florida alum. Um, you know, demolished number 19 UCLA, 27 to 10. Bowl eligible for the first time since 2017. Uh, has beaten a ranked opponent, beaten ranked opponents three weeks in a row. First time in program history. Uh, their only regulation loss was to number five Washington by seven points. Mm. It's impressive. Yeah, boy. I, I'm telling you right now, bro. He, he's just getting prepared to do something really big soon. Please, I mean, like, go to, to be in like go to Mississippi no. State. Like. <laughs> if, <laughs> hey, man, if I was a, it good. that's that's a good that we're gonna it jump is. into a we're gonna jump into a and M, but because I, I do have some breaking news, but Jed Fish could be lined up to get that job bro and to go back to what you said about him being a, a crazy good recruiter i don't watch too many press conferences from other teams like you know i watch like all the florida state stuff and like our relevant teams and we've just been force fed coach prime interviews all season so i'm tired mm -hmm. of i'm tired of hearing the same excuses on that and him throwing his players under the bus by the way um but jed fish man he was when he came in he was serious bro he was like we're going to turn this thing around. And I think I started paying attention to it because we did revamp during around the time that he got hired. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. He, he was already hired, but we started doing that. And I started looking up a lot of their stuff right after. So every revamp team we play, a lot of y'all have a special place in our heart. Akron, we're looking at you. Go Zips. <laughs> Please. <laughs>